the uh, commander, the pilot, spent most of their time. Once, once the, everything was lifted off, they also joined the others in, in certain chores. Once they got into orbit and latched on to the uh, International Space Station, uh, they had certain things to do. Once they left the International Space Station, it was all flying. So this is where it was done from. If you look up in front, you have the commander's seat. I'd like to let you sit in one of those seats, but we can't do it. This is an old analog uh, panel, meaning everything had gauges and dials, basically. Replaced in 1998 by a glass cockpit, which was the, uh, it gave you an actual digital readout of uh, whatever was happening. There are some 2100 plus switches and switch positions that had to be memorized in this trainer before you could get assigned to a flight. This is the primary purpose of this, this particular trainer was for the astronauts and the mission specialists to be familiar with the outline, the, the out, all of the different equipment and stuff and how it was used and where it was used. You'll see there's a control, control stick just like in a regular airplane, controls pitch, roll, and yaw. Uh, when you're in space, it's controlled by thruster. There are some 44 thrusters, thrusters on the uh, space shuttle. Up to your left, you'll see a square knob. That's called a translational control. Transitional control. Translational control, excuse me. Uh, what it will do is once you set an attitude on the shuttle, either hooked to the space station or not. Uh, you can move the shuttle up, down, sideways, fore, and aft without changing attitude. It didn't do anything to your pitch roll in your arm. Okay? The black handle that you see operated the uh, thruster engines when you were in space and transitioned to operating your control, particularly your speed brake, when you got back into the atmosphere. And the computers told us when to make the transition. You have uh, five computers, one, one of those is a backup, the other four are constantly talking to one another, saying is this error message correct or wrong. They check it back and forth in microseconds and let you know up here in the cockpit what's going on or make the changes to where you don't even know what happened. When you land the shuttle, uh, it's built to be landed automatically, but you do have a manual override. This, the control panel here in the center is where you make the switching that you needed to, to manually override to land. Uh, every shuttle astronaut that we've heard of chose to land it manually. Hmm. And if, if, are you guys, either of you guys fires? No. no. I'm not. If, if you, You'd be around airplanes, you, you, you don't want that, that young computer landing your airplane. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> yeah, those guys that flew the first Airbus had, had a lot of guts. <laughs> but it works. Uh, if you turn around now, you have another flight control panel right here, plus some controls for the payload bay. If you look up through the windows here, you can see the connector to the International Space Station. It's right down below the lip. Here. You've come a long way to see something that there's no, you'll, you won't see anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. This particular vehicle, this training vehicle, is the ex an exact replica of the body of a shuttle, and it's the only place that the public can get in to see both the payload bay and the crew compartment. Mm -hmm. On uh, the left, the right side here, you have the controls for the Canada arm. You have again an aircraft type control for pitch, roll, and yaw, and a translational control. Just one arm. One arm, but three. It's just just like your 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 arm here. You got a shoulder right. and a mid yep. Yep. and a wrist. Yep. You fly it just like you do an airplane because you want you're going to want to twist and you're going to want to move it. Yep. So you fly it with aircraft type controls. And when they, when they designed this thing, somebody was thinking, because they said, you know what, we're just going to take that stick that everybody's familiar with, that, that control that everybody's familiar with, we're going to put it in there, and that's the way we're going to run that arm. Cool. This is King County.
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> King County Special. Uh, on your right and left above you, you see some sacks. Uh, this is where they, what they call Sky Genie, which is a, uh, uh, an escape mechanism. You blow this W8 window, and the Sky Genie is a rope with a detent on it, so you can rappel down the side if you have to escape on the ground uh, because of any kind of an emergency, fire or anything like that. And you will see, if you look at look closely at the sides, you'll see the skid marks yeah. of where they practiced. Somebody said, well, aren't we going to clean it up and paint it? And uh, the curator said, not on your life. <laughs> it's going to look just like it did when we got it. Which is why they say, you know, don't sit in the seats and do that. They're trying to preserve this yeah. as natural mm -hmm. as possible. So and You can see we do have some of the panels glassed off, and that's simply just... Uh, I, I, I'm one of the guilty parties because if I see switches, I want to throw them and see what happens. Of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, this is your radio panel here. You've got uh, over here. Yeah, data radios and uh, voice radios. I guess both of them will do voice and data, but your KU band does does mainly data better, and uh, uh, the uh, the S band generally does voice better. That's uh, one of the amateur bands. So. Okay, any questions? What's the video processing unit? Well, what you see here is some closed circuit TV. Okay. Oh, okay. yeah. And you have closed circuit TV up here, too, so that you can see what's going on. You got closed circuit TV over here, so you can see what's going on, and you need processors to take care of yeah. all of those messages. One of the things the astronauts practice in this particular thing is they actually suit up and go out and do work in the payload bay, and the other ones will be up here trying different lighting schemes and camera schemes to make sure they know how to make those adjustments in space because that's no place to learn, that's a place to do. How long were their days? So you said that the commander and the captain, so the commander and the captain are pretty much here flying and people slept, because we learned that downstairs. Okay. So, uh, for, for most missions when they're flying around up there, is there always someone up here driving? No, uh, because once you're connect if you're connected to a space station or in orbit, uh -huh. it drives itself. Uh -huh. So when they're in orbit, these two guys aren't even, once you're in orbit, these two guys are down there doing experiments and stuff. They may be, or they may be here, and one of the things you'll see, particularly as a mission, is coming to the point where it's going to break out of orbit and come home. Sure. There's pictures of guys, the pilot and the co-pilot, sitting here looking at approach procedures right. and landing procedures. They, they will do that. There's also maneuvers that have to take place in space. For example, if you're going to uh, launch something sure. with that uh, initial yeah. upper stage, you need to get into a position to where it can float out at about a 60 degree angle and yeah. get a certain distance away and then you have to actuate the rockets from in here yeah. to go off to Jupiter or Mars or whatever they're, they're sending a uh, payload package to. Right. Cool. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. And, uh, you guys all set? I'll show yep. you, show you yes. how to bail out of this thing. Okay. If you could float down, it would be easier. Yeah, it sure would, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, just kind of sit down. It's like in a swimming pool. Scooch over to the left. That right hand there, left hand here. Go down to the second rung with your left foot. Just climb on down. All right. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks,